This is the 2024 Nissan Armada Platinum. Is now the time to buy? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today, Carrie and I are at Orr Nissan in Shreveport, Louisiana, and we're gonna talk about why you might want to go ahead and buy one of these 2024 models instead of waiting for the full redesign for 2025. There's gonna be a new engine under the hood and a lot of things. Towing numbers, solid here. You can still get the V8 under the hood. Let's see what else you get. As always, there's a link in the description of the video to the Or Nissan website. So we'll start here with our headlight housing. You can see what is LED by what has the flickering effect. That has to do with our camera. It's not really happening. I pretty much don't have to even tell you what's LED. Now you do have LED fog lights down here on this area. However, they're not on, so they're not flickering. And a little bit of chrome accent, not only here, but also the trim on the grill. We've got that on both sides. A consistent look on some of the Nissan models from over the years. It has been seven years since this model was fully redesigned as far as the model years go. And obviously you'll have your sensors, parking sensors, all those great driving aids, safety features, everything you've come to expect that's gonna be here on the front end. A nice overall look. And depending on what you want, you can go two-wheel drive, you can go four-wheel drive. Let's talk about tire, wheel si tire and wheel size, something that goes right into that. We're looking at 275 on our width. We're going to have a 50 series sidewall that's going to be wrapped around the 22 inch wheels. A nice look with those wheels for those who maybe don't like chrome and maybe don't like black, gloss black, but you will find some chrome here on your mirror caps. Not a bad thing, I don't believe. And your turn signal indicators built in. These are power adjustable side view mirrors. You've got your cameras built in down there. We'll show you that later in the video from the interior. They're also heated. And here is what your remote looks like. Now, in case you can't see everything, you do have a remote start, obviously lock and unlock, and your panic button down there. You can also open your rear hatch if you want to. Have our chrome door handles here. And the button right here, when you have the remote in your possession and walk up to the vehicle, you can push that button to lock or unlock the interior. Now, this is not super high off the ground, but still you've got the assist steps built in right here. I like the way that looks, a little bit of a different look. It's not just kind of almost looks like it's floating here. You can tell that it's molded in the way it's built. It just looks like everything is one piece. It just offers a little bit of a cleaner look compared to some competitors where you don't have what makes it look like everything just flows together right here into the fender flares and all that kind of stuff. Plenty of room up top for cargo. If you need to add something up there, if you can get up there, it's up there a ways. But you have the roof rails, you have the crossbars, it's all there. Nice tall windows. That's always a good thing about a full-size SUV is the windows are not narrow, so very easy to see out of in most situations. But that's one thing about having all the cameras, blind spot monitoring, all that good stuff. We will have the exposed rear window wiper here don't think that's a bad thing. This window is so big that it doesn't really have that look where it needs to be cleaned up by hiding the wiper away up here. And we'll finish things off here with our tail lights. You can see your platinum logo right there. Even though this model hasn't been redesigned for quite a few years, it still has a nice modern look to it. And for those of you who are anti-turbocharger, you better not wait for 2025. Some people are okay with that. But this is a naturally aspirated 5.6 liter V8. It will not be here in 2025. Just have to make your decisions on that. 400 horsepower, 413 on the torque, and made it to a seven speed automatic transmission. And we'll work our way over here and take a look at what we have with our MPGs. So here's what we're looking at. 14 city, 19 highway, 16 combined, and 6.2 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. Somebody tell me in the comments section, what other full-size SUV has, with a particular motor under the hood, that same 6.2 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven? Now we'll work our way over here to the driver's side because that's where the gas tank is located. Open the gas door here. Guess what? For those of you who don't like capless fuel fill, you have a gas cap here. Kind of sounds like we're back a few years ago. I don't think that's a bad thing. Let's see if it has that click. Not much, it doesn't do it. If you know what I'm talking about, 
it used to just click almost like it was one of those cars you pulled back that had the gears and you let them go and they take off and you pull it back too far and the gears grind. Anyway, the reason I really wanted to show you this is because I wanted to tell you that you have a 26 gallon gas tank. So let's talk about cargo capacity and towing for the 2024 Nissan Armada Platinum. This vehicle will tow 8,500 pounds on the tow hitch, which is located underneath this cover right here. The vehicle has cargo capacity in the back of 16.5 cubic feet with all seats up and 92.6 with all seats down. How do you get into the back of the vehicle? Underneath the Armada, there are two buttons down here, one to unlock it and one to, open, uh, one to lock it. The long rectangular button, you hold it and the cargo door goes up to its full extension. I'm gonna close this. There's also another button right here you can't see it from here. But let me show you right here. That button there locks the vehicle once it's closed. As you can see, here is the cargo capacity area. There is a carpeted floor mat right here. There's a net. Let me move some of this out of the way. The sill right here is illuminated, which is very, very nice. You don't see that in a lot of vehicles. Underneath this floor, there's a little handle here. It doesn't hold on to anything. A little bit of storage right there and underneath this storage is some more storage where your jack is located not a whole lot going on there the spare tire is underneath the vehicle in case you're wondering about that and there are some more areas here to keep your seats from getting dirty when putting things in the back of it you have a socket here for 12 volt connection and you have the ability to put these seats down in the back to increase your cargo capacity. There's a button on the bottom, button on the top for right and left. If you push this button for this seat over here, you don't have to hold the button. You just push it, seat goes down. If you push the button again while it's going forward, it will stop in the place that it's in at the time that you stop it. So I'll push it forward again and let it go all the way forward. It's not very fast, but it does get the job done eventually. On the right side, same similar button. Push the button one time. You do not have to hold that button you just push it and the seat goes down. If you push the button in any direction as it's moving, it will stop the seat. You press it again and the seat will go down or up, whichever direction you choose. And eventually it does get there. And there you go for your cargo capacity with the third row seats down. I'm gonna go to the side of this vehicle and, and let these seats down so you can see what the cargo capacity is completely through the back. So let's finish up on this maximum cargo space. In order to get your maximum cargo space, you have to lower the second row seats. There is a latch on, there's two of them. There's one on the top of that seat and there's one on the side of the seat. Either one, if you pull either one of those, the seat goes down. However, it, ten, it tends to want to flip itself forward so you have to force it back down to get your maximum cargo space. So if you look at the floor here, you can see there's an angle to it. It does not lay all the way down, but you get considerable space in here. You just can't lay a flat board in here. So anything you put back here that's long is going to have an angle to it. You can then push the seat. Let me show you in the back of the seat while we're talking about it. For your seat, uh, car seats, the latch system right here for your anchors. I haven't seen any vehicles before where the latch is covered in the back. And this is, it has a hinge on it. So you don't have to worry about losing that and you just press it back down. Haven't seen that in any other vehicle, like the ones in the back. It's just an open latch. The seat goes back up, you push it up, it goes back into place, and it comes up to a straight angle, and you can recline the seat by grabbing the same knob on the side, pulling it, and pushing the seat back, and you get some recline in there. I'm gonna show you the how much recline you get compared to the normal up position, and you get some considerable uh, room in there for your recline feature on that seat. Very, very nice. We have a armrest right here that you fold down. It's vertical, which is very good. I'll show you when I get in the vehicle why that's a good thing to have in that position. The leather is feels very, very good in this vehicle. There's a diamond stitch pattern in it. It would probably be you know, a little bit more luxurious to have some contrast stitching in it because this brown stitching there is some, a little bit of black piping, but it doesn't really stand out that much. However, it is still very, very nice. Let's talk about the door panel here. There's a button here for your automatic window. There's a door latch there to 
open the door and get out and you can see your lock feature on there also. There's a bottle holder and a little bit of storage behind that and you have speaker top and bottom. There's a little pattern above that front uh, top speaker of the door. It's very shiny and it has like a little pattern in it that makes it a little high class looking. The armrest test that we like to do, let me see what Tom thinks on his end over there about the armrest test. He likes it. I do too on this end. It's very, very well cushioned and the arm fits and sits very nice on it. And it's just, it's a really, really good armrest. Door grab handles right here to get into the vehicle on all four, both back doors and the front doors. Just put your foot on that footrest down there and pull yourself in there with easy ingress or egress. Third row, let's see what's going on back there. To access the third row in the 2024 Nissan Armada, same latch you use to increase your storage, but your cargo capacity, pull that latch and the seat goes up. That's very nice because as a luxury vehicle, we've done so many vehicles that have the power motors and they take a long time and you hit the button and you're waiting and you're waiting, you go get lunch, you come back and the seat is still moving forward. This here just flips forward. Let's get back here and see what's going on. I can tell right now that this would not be very comfortable for a long time because the seat is very, very, the floor, I'm sorry, is very, very high. Let me pull this back and bring this seat back up. I don't have a, you know, it's not really, really bad right here, but my knees are higher than I would prefer them to be. There's no room to put your feet underneath the seat. The seat is sitting straight up, but it does have a button right here on the door, where on the, I'm sorry, the door on the side of the panel here, where you can recline this seat backward. That's as far as it goes, or you can recline it forward. There are no USBs back here for the third row uh, passengers, but you do have air conditioning vents right here in the ceiling, which is something we like because, you know, as we often say, when the air conditioning is coming out down, you can be cooler there because the air is not, doesn't have much room to, or much time to uh, warm up when it gets to you. But other than two cup holders on each side and a recline uh, for your seat, there's not much else going on back here. The seat does not go forward or backward. And if your back seat, or if your second row passenger decides to let that seat back, then you're done for. So bear that in mind if you're a second row passenger that you have people on the back. But one thing this vehicle does have that I haven't seen in any other vehicle is if for your seat belts on the second row, it does have the adjustment here to lower up and down. So in case you're taller or shorter, the seat belt does not cut into your neck. I don't think any other vehicle I've seen has that in the second row seat belts. When it's time to get out, you push the same button on the top of the seat latch, you push that lever forward, and the seat goes forward and you can hop on out of your cramped rear Armada third row seat. So let's talk about the second row features in the 2024 Armada Platinum. Let's step inside here using my grab handle and footrest. Shut the door, the door has a very nice sound when it closes. I need to recline this seat a little bit using the same lever we talked about. I'm very comfortable. Good space right here. I sat in the front earlier and put that seat in place so that I'm five foot six. That's where the seat is comfortable for me. So I have decent room here. There's the button here for your one touch down window. You push that button one time and the window starts to go down. If you want to go the opposite, to stop it, you pull it the opposite way to get it to stop. If you push it down, and let it go, it goes down the rest of the way. You pull it back up and it continues all the way. And it does go completely down. It doesn't stop halfway or three quarters of the way like a lot of vehicles do. In the back of this door, you have door pockets on both sides. They're pretty deep. You can probably get almost anything you need in there. You have cup holders here. This is something Tom talks about a lot in his videos that he wishes manufacturers would put vertical cup holders in there so you can put your arm on here with the bottles or cups in there as opposed to them being side by side. So if you have an elbow, an arm here, here and one on this side, you can still have cups or bottles there and you can still use it at the same time, which is a very nice feature. You have the latch system for car seats. Only problem with this latch system here is that unlike in the back of this seat for the anchor where there's a hinge, these don't hinge. Once you pull them off to use them, they come off. You might lose them, you might not or you could just throw them in one of these back seat uh, pockets, but 
they are there if you need them and they snap back in very very nice you have seat belts here for three people which is good you have a very very small hump in the floor it's not terrible but the second uh, the middle seat does kind of press into my back for a child this would be fine the center console area back here you have a button right here that a lot of it most vehicles don't have that I've ever seen matter of fact, I've seen it in another vehicle where you can push a button back here to access that front cargo area which is pretty cool and you can get into almost any everything in there which is very nice you have heated seats in the back on both sides outboard not inboard and you have air conditioning controls in the back you have your fan speed right here up and down you have your temperature control here colder or hotter and you have a mode here for feet and face only feet only face there's a dead spot here must be for something in a higher trim level we'll find out later on you have a, a 12 volt socket right here at the bottom a household plug right there on the left side on the bottom and you have USB connectivity in two places right here air conditioning vents right here in the ceiling I can feel that air coming down really nice on me right now I'm sure it's just as cold hitting me as it is when it's coming out you have a light control here for reading lights there in the back and your grab handle with a hook right there if you want to hook something on there very nice this second row is very very nice I could ride back here for quite a long time okay if you were gonna come in to or Nissan and buy this Armada Platinum what would it cost you seventy one thousand six hundred and five dollars let's dig in to what else you'll find here in the front seat area and we always start with the door panel on the passenger side over there basically the same setup with materials that we saw a little bit more space on that armrest let's see if Carrie thinks it's as comfortable as I thought the rear armrest was it is that's one good thing here you definitely have comfortable armrest and for the door bend snobs in your life they better hop in the front seat because boy that is much larger than what we had in the rear the rear door is more bottle holders this is nothing unusual you're gonna have the larger door bend in the front power adjustable seats your lumbar support adjustment also there on the side so you've got all your controls right there in a neat convenient place so you don't have to concern yourself with say the same thing as in a Mercedes Benz where you have some controls here and lumbar support on the side kind of interesting how that works I guess that makes sense but that's just how they do it and they're also heated and ventilated that's a plus because it is humid today in Northwest Louisiana we'll let Carrie hop on inside now and take a look into the interior here now one thing that I'm interested to see for 2025 is what will happen here there's a lot of space that seems to be unused right there we're seeing more automakers use that so I'm curious to see when we get to get our hands on a 25 Armada for the first time there is the gloveless glove box always have anything in there but gloves we find nothing in there other than the lack of gloves but that's just the way it is and our screen right here now this screen does have an angle to it but the thing I like about it is that it is anything but complicated it really doesn't have a ridiculous amount on here it's very easy to work your way through it's pretty responsive as well for being a vehicle that is not freshly refreshed or redesigned I must say I'm pretty impressed with what I see here and you can see what all is here there's everything for phone if you want navigation built in which I know a lot of you do there is how you're going to get to that so that's always a good thing you can go back to menu right here and you can see what else is here for audio and info and phone you can pair your phone here no problem and let's go into in fact let me do this let me hit the camera button there's a button right down here Carrie's going to tell you a lot more about this area but there is a camera button right here and you can see what we have as far as our different angles go we've got that overhead view we can make some changes to what we're looking from there's the side view mirror camera we showed you where those were located earlier in the video there's your rear view and there you go you can see what all is here pretty easy to deal with obviously when you go into reverse you're going to get that as well so that's a good thing and so now let's work our way down here pretty easy to deal with what we have right here control for the radio volume turning that on and off 
And if you want to change stations, you can do that here or you can do it here as well. You can also make some changes to whether or not the screen is lighter or darker with that button. So that's why I guess sun and moon modes, if we want to call it that, I don't know. Air conditioning vents here, you know what those are. And remember I told you, you have your heated seats, the last thing we need today. You also have your ventilated seats. We do need that today. We'll see how cool those get on the test drive later on. Dual zone climate control, no surprises there. You can sync those sides together if you want to, or you can leave them to where everybody can adjust them themselves. Now this area right here is concealed away if you want it until you want to use the wireless charging pad right here. You've got some connectivity as far as that goes right here. We'll also have some more down here in this area. You've got your trailer braking right here. And then just a good old fashioned, old school style shifter that you can use to do whatever you need to do, whatever you need to drive, reverse, drive, whatever your situation is, no push button shifter here. I like that. Kind of an interesting thing here as far as going into snow mode, if you want to do that. I think that's what that says. Yes, it is and then tow right there. What's interesting is when you push snow, it goes down and stays in place. When you go into tow mode, maybe if you have a trailer on that stays down, but it won't do that right now. If you want to attempt a two wheel drive burnout, since that's what this model is, can you imagine smoking the tires in your Armada? Send me a picture or a video if you do that and I'll send you a free vehicle visionary t-shirt. You can conceal away your cup holders right there if you want to. And then we have everything right here that we can use as one touch buttons to get to different things on the screen. If I want to go home, I can push that button. That's going to bring it up. You can see it doing its thing right there. And then if we want to change what screen we're on without touching the screen, we can do that. And you just push that center section and it selects what it is you're on, just in case you were curious to see about that. Pretty easy to deal with as far as that goes. Just nice to know that it's there. Carrie's Driving Lounge here again today, folks. 2024 Nissan Armada Platinum. Let's see what's going on here. So you've decided to get rid of that Bentley Bentayga. It's just too complicated. You want to get an Armada. Let's see what's going on. Open the door up here. One thing this vehicle does not have is soft closed doors. So you have to close them all the way yourself. When you open them, you have Nissan Armada in your kick plate. It is backlit. It looks just like white paint, but it's actually a backlit seal. You have seat memory, one and two. I think Tom talked about those already. So let's talk about what's on this dashboard here. You have the button here to push to open your tailgate. If you push that button to open your tailgate, you can also push that button while the gate is on the way up. If you push it again, the gate will stop and go back down. You have the heated steering wheel right here. And you have the, the, uh, the button to push for your uh, mitigation around your vehicle for safety, blind spot, lane keep, and all those type of things there. There's a button right here that you can turn on and off for your power lift gate. If you push this button down and turn it off, and then you go to open that lift gate, it will not open by power. It'll just unlock. Then you have to pull it up all the way with your hand. You turn the button on, then it operates as a fully power uh, door. You have your parking brake, which is push on, push off. You have a dead pedal right there. Let's step inside after I show you the seat controls, forward, backward, that's for your back and that's for your lumbar. Let's step inside here. Like I said, you have a dead pedal down here, brake pedal, gas pedal. Here's your lever for your tilt telescope steering wheel. It is pretty quick. The telescope's not so fast, but the tilt is very fast. Shut the door. Nice sounding door when it closes. You have your mirror controls left and right and your adjustments and there's your folding feature right there on the door and you have automatic windows on all four doors and there's the button to lock all the windows. Up here on the binnacle you have your trip reset, your uh, dimmer switch for your uh, dashboard up and down and you have this, I really like this because it's analog. I drive three vehicles. They're all TFT screens, and those things terrify me that they may go out one day. But this is analog, except for the TFT part in the middle. But I like the analog gauges on here. We'll get back to those. The steering wheel on this, it feels fairly decent.
but for a vehicle this large, I wish it was a thicker steering wheel, but it does feel pretty good. I'm gonna put the steering wheel down a little bit. You have a multi-spoke steering wheel with a lot of buttons on it. We'll cover them briefly. You have a stock on the side here. The cover is for your lights, headlights, um, parking lights, turn signals. This is your turn signal one, left turn signal, right turn signal. Make sure you use those. On the other side, you have your wiper controls. There you go. You can control all that. Your intermittent, your rear washer, push that. And those are pretty standard on any vehicle. On your steering wheel, you have a back button for your features here. You have um, a menu, which you can select different menus on this. Let me see how we get that to work. There we go. You push it, then you go up and down, and then you push that to activate what you want to activate. There is an apps button um, on there. I'm going to push that and various apps show up and they also show up over here on the screen you have volume control you have channel control on the left side on the right side you have your distance control for your cruise control but it's not on your cruise control activation set reset cancel and you have your uh, safety mitigation again on this side for your lane keeping and collision mitigation here is your telephone um, activation the airbag area, it looks like soft leather, but it really isn't. But, you know, again, like I say, it is what it is. Your airbag is in there. That's the most important thing. On the right side, you have your start-stop button right here for your engine. Cup holder, uh, I'm sorry, the armrest right here. There's a, how do you work that? It'll pull that up, and you have access to the armrest inside of this armrest it's pretty deep yeah, it's, it's fairly deep it would be nice if there was a refrigerator in there and you have the on off switch right here for that 12 volt that is in the that little square area that's where your 12 volt is in the back and that's the on off for that so your kids can't be back to playing with that when you don't want them to this is the hole right here for when somebody in the back wants to access your uh armrest from the back but the only thing is is from here you can barely get into it yourself from the driver's seat but i guess it's just for them to get into and there's the control tom show with the audio menu your uh, map your back button and your camera features up top here we have a visor it does not on the visor test i like to do it, it doesn't pull out but it does have an extension right here so pull this over the visor doesn't extend, but the extension does. It's just that the extension isn't doesn't come all the way down to here. I wish it did, but it does cover. What it does cover, it does cover the, the entire window. You have a grab handle right here on all four doors, which we already discussed. Those are the back ones, and you do have the adjustment for your seatbelt so that if you're tall or short, the seatbelt does not cut into your neck. On your visor, you have a mirror with a light in it. Up top, you have eyeglass holder. And you have buttons for your interior lighting right here. You have a sunroof. It's not panoramic, unfortunately. Your shade is manual. You pull this back for the roof. It's a very small roof for such a large vehicle. And there is no panoramic feature in there. You push, push this button to close the roof. Of course, the shade does not come with it. You have to manually close the shade. And other than that, um, one more thing is it does not have heads-up display either. Um, but other than that, I mean, this is for the price you pay for this and compared to the competition. I, mean, I think it's it's on par with the competition. Um, tell us what you think. Would you buy this? The V8 is going away. It's coming in with a six cylinder turbo for the 2025 model with a new redesign. If you prefer the V8, you need to get this. If you don't care and you like six cylinder turbos, six cylinder turbos, then 2025 will be the one you want. Let us know what you think about it. If there's something else you want us to check out for a carrier driving lounge or for a full review, let us know. Like and subscribe, people. See you next time. And I forgot to cover the dashboard binnacle like I promised I would. On the left side, you have your RPM gauge, which goes to 8,000 RPM. On the right side, you have, the, you have the speedometer. It goes to 140 miles an hour or 220 kilometers if you're a kilometer person. There's the fuel gauge that shows how much fuel you have, and it shows that your gas tank door is on the driver's side. It shows how much uh, 
range you have on your fuel, 333 miles in this particular vehicle. This being a brand new vehicle has 63 miles on it, and it shows that we are in reverse. The shifter knob is right here that Tom showed you before. I will shift with those gears. It shows you in front of you that you're in revert. We're in reverse, park, drive, neutral, and back to park. You have the coolant temperature under the RPM gauge and you have a compass in front of you also a clock a temperature gauge and there's a speed limit indicator that tells you or it tells you how fast the speed limit is in the area that you are driving park brake is on and also shows you whether or not people are wearing seat belts i'm not wearing my seat belt because i'm sitting still in the vehicle right now so don't ask me why i'm not wearing a seat belt because i'm not driving at the moment and there you go for that portion all right let's get this test drive going on the 2024 nissan armada platinum so my question is after the short drive that i took to get to this uh test drive spot is could i drive this for a thousand miles so far yes for me personally very quiet for a v8 when I'm sitting at idle at a red light or a stop sign, it's very, very quiet. It's not shaking the vehicle. It's not rattling around. Um, for a non-air suspension vehicle, you know, it's very, very smooth. It doesn't uh, have jars and shutters in it. It feels very nice. The It does not have brake hold, though. I can't, at least I can't find it in the vehicle. So when I came to the red lights and the stop signs, I did have to hold the brake. Uh, which you no, know, I have three vehicles that have brake holes, so and I'm I'm kind of spoiled by that. But this vehicle here does not have brake hole, but not a big deal. Um, the second row middle headrest is in the way. Um, I can't see out the back window clearly. However, if you flip this uh, frameless mirror right here, it does have a rear view camera, which gives me a clear view to the entire road, which is a very nice thing to have. It's kind of odd to drive with that um, in the eyes when you're used to a mirror but there it is if people are in that back seat and you can't see then you have a rear view camera that you can use the gauges as i said they're analog they look very very nice i don't have to worry about worrying about a tft screen going out on me everything is clear i can see my speed limit is 55 miles an hour i'm doing 46 45 there's a compass up there Everything I need to know is there. Um, no problems there. The map screen is right there. I can see every, where I'm going. Um, but I will say this, we recently did um, the Pathfinder and the Rogue. And I will say that in this vehicle here, the resolution on the screen is not as clear and sharp as those are, but those are newer updated vehicles. So I'm sure that the next version of this in 2025 will have a sharper, more crisp, crisp screen for your uh, navigation and your camera feature so we're about to come up on our railroad track spot that we like to test suspensions on when we make our right turn and we'll see then how this feels i'm braking now for this uh slowdown to make this turn um, the vehicle is weighty i can definitely feel the weight behind it but it's not ungainly i don't feel like i can't control it let's see how this railroad track feels when i go over it I, other than the roll, I did not feel that. Tom, did you feel that at all? Just a little. Tom bit. said he felt it just a little bit from the back. I barely felt it from the front. But like I did say, the vehicle does have weight behind it, and you can definitely feel the weight of the vehicle. But the 400 horsepower engine, wow. I mean, it does carry this vehicle very, very smoothly and swiftly. This engine is not struggling at all to carry the weight of this vehicle. So I do believe that um, for a thousand miles from the driver's seat, yeah, I could definitely handle it. I think Tom can handle it from the back seat uh, comfortably. The third row passengers, that's only made for children. No adults are gonna sit back there for a thousand miles. The floor is too high. Um, but overall, I wish you could feel what I feel in this vehicle. It is very comfortable. And I think I have no problem driving this for a thousand miles. Is it worthy competition to its competitors? I think it is. If you don't want the V6 turbo that's coming out and you want the V8 and this smooth ride, then I think this is definitely something you should consider. 
grab it while it's still here because once they're gone, they're gonna be gone. Okay, tell me what you think about the 2024 Nissan Armada Platinum. Is now the time to buy? I sure think it is because this model is on its last years or days or weeks, not years. It is its last year, but you get what I'm saying. So if you want a brand new one at least, pretty soon is gonna be the best time to pull the trigger and go ahead and buy one. Unless you're gonna wait for 2025, we'll try and get some details on that hopefully in the next few months for you and actually show you one if you're that person that wants to wait. Tell me what you think about having Carrie and I share duties in front of the camera. We're gonna try and do that more often. We've got some other things we're working on for the near future here. Stay tuned for that. I do want to say a special thanks to our friends at Or Nissan for loaning us this Armada for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give us the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you haven't subscribed, please be sure to do so. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out that video right over there and we'll see you there.